good. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Judge I hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because today I am doing a video that I probably should have done a very long time ago. This last week I got asked the question, why don't I work on more echo units? Well, to be honest, I really don't think about it because they never break. The ones that I've sold, I never have gearhead issues, I never have shaft issues, the throttle control assembly is made so well, it never breaks. The throttle cables, I never have to change them. The ones that I see come into the shop are due to extreme lack of maintenance and either they're a simple fix or they're dead. So for this demonstration, I brought home a customer's SRM 225 Echo string trimmer and we're going to just diagnose it. We're going to start at the beginning. First, we're going to take it outside, see what it's doing and uh, go over everything that it could possibly be. Now, when the customer brought it in, he said it won't throttle up but he brought in three units and said all three of them won't throttle up. So after we take it outside and see what it's doing, we're gonna check this fuel. All right, I'm gonna turn it on, go to priming it. Put it on choke and let's see what it does. It definitely has issues. So first, I'm gonna pour out the gas and see what it looks like. Well, it actually looks like it has echo oil in it. That's a good thing, no water. So, smell test. Smells good. I'm gonna put it back in the machine. Now I went ahead and checked on this one and I wanna remind you also, while you have the gas removed, always check your fuel filter, make sure it's still attached to your fuel line. That way you know no trash is sucked up into your carburetor and blocked your screen and make sure that your fuel line is still pliable and not stretchy or sucking in on itself. Next, we pull the air filter cover off and look at the air filter because a machine that cannot breathe will not run. Definitely needs to be changed, but I've seen a lot worse and air can actually still get through this. It's not really caked up much, just dusty. Next, we're gonna pull the plug. Now the plug is always a great indicator on whether the machine is getting too much fuel or not enough, running too lean or is too rich. So we're gonna pull that out and also at the same time, we're able to check the cylinder walls and make sure that they're not scored. Remember to always twist your boot off. Do not tug it or you will rip the boot off. Now the Echoes are not as bad since they switched to this big, huge, bulky one, but especially on the steels, always be careful. Twist it off instead of yanking it off. black but I wouldn't say bad it doesn't have a bunch of carbon buildup on it like I've seen some so I don't know let's look inside the cylinder now if you got a good flashlight you can just look down inside and check out the walls and see if there's any up and down scoring if there is your unit might be burned up if you still have cross thatching going left and right that means it's probably still in really good shape now, just for giggles, I'm pulling out this bad boy endoscope right here. I did get an upgraded one. The last one y'all saw, I had to hook up to my tablet and see it through that. But this one is super awesome, super simple. It's seriously, you turn the on button on, it's got the camera with the light on it, and it is such good definition. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you'd like to check that out, because they're just super cool to have. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on. This one is by Depth Tech, and I've had really good luck out of it. I mean, it works really well. So I'm just gonna go down into the cylinder and I'm gonna give y'all a look. Now I do need to 
bring my piston down to the bottom before I do this so I can get a good view of the entire cylinder wall. And once you're in there, uh, I don't know if y'all will be able to see that well. There is some up and down scoring that I can see. Now, it looks worse on this than it is from me just seeing it down here, but that is sort of troublesome. So, hopefully the unit's not burned up. We're going to check the compression and find out. If you don't have a compression tester, that's okay. A lot of times, especially on the Echo units, you can just leave the spark plug in, hold the pull rope, and if it falls like that, you know that your compression is not good. I don't have the spark plug in right now, but while the plug's in, you should be able it just slowly go down. But if it falls down with the spark plug in, that's not a good sign either. So a lot of people have asked about the compression tester that I use. I do use Mighty Vac, and I've had really good luck with them. In, uh, I think, 11 years, I've only had to go through two of them. So, and I use it every single day, multiple times a day. I'm going to put this together, and we'll check some compression. Should get a good rating after about three pulls, and... We have 120 pounds of compression, which is really good. Now, when working on things and testing compression, if anything is below 100 pounds, I do not work on it. That um, always leaves room for it not running to its full potential. And I can't have customers thinking, you know, that I'm not fixing it correctly when actually it's a dead unit. So if it has a, a hundred or below, I don't work on it. 110 is good. 120 is pretty perfect. A lot of the big backpack blowers, they'll have 140, 150. That's fine too. Um, but yeah, you always have to check compression because if it's too low, you don't want to be working on a dead unit and putting a bunch of money into it that is just going to waste. So if you've watched my previous videos, then you already know where we're going next. We know the gas is good. We know that the airflow is not restricted. We know that the cylinder's in pretty good shape. We gotta check the exhaust. To get to the exhaust, we're gonna have to take this top shroud off and there's only two bolts holding it to the machine. There's one back here by the rewind, which will take a T27 torque tool to remove it. Also another one right up here. And then when you take it off, you're gonna feel a little resistance. That's because you have kill wires in this little plastic bracket right here. You're just gonna to wanna to pull them out and push them over to the side, just like that. All right, I've removed my two screws. Gotta get the spark plug boot through the hole. And then we're going to check out this muffler. Now we do see some oily buildup down here, so it is potentially clogged up. But when I looked through the cylinder and saw the exhaust port, I could tell from the inside that the exhaust port going to the muffler itself was not clogged up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not removing the whole muffler. I'm just going to take off these bolts right here that take uh, the air channel plate off. And then behind that is a screen. You'll use your T27 to remove these three bolts. Now this might be stuck to it, so you might have to get something to pry it loose a little bit. I'm just gonna use a little leverage and it comes right off. Now behind here, we have a muffler gasket and your screen is right here. So we got to get this gasket off next. I'm just gonna grab something pokey. Try not to hurt myself as I do this. And oh yeah, this bad boy is clogged to the max. Let me get some light behind it so I can show you how bad it is. So hopefully you can see that, but about half of it is covered up with carbon buildup. So I am going to replace the screen. Now, if you're at home, you can just hold it with your needle nose pliers, burn it with a lighter. If that's all you've got, a lot of people say use a torch, whatever you want to do and scrape it off. Or you can use some kind of carburetor cleaner, some kind of brake cleaner, something like that to get it clean. And I recommend putting it back in. Now, a lot of you are going to say, just throw it away. And that's fine. You can do whatever you want to do, but I do work 
in a small engine shop where I can get fined $27,000 if I do not put a screen back in the machine. So I'm going to tell you, put that screen back in. So I have a brand new screen here. As you can see, the part number is a 145-862-40630 if you do want to replace your screen. And uh, when you do that, if you set the machine on its side to where everything's working with gravity, it's a lot easier than trying to hold everything up to the side. And we're just going to put it back down, put our gasket back down, our plate and our screws. So I know you're wondering why does this clog up like this? Well, because of the EPA making manufacturers limit the amount of carbon that comes out of the machine, the spark arresters do get clogged up if one, you do not run your machine at full throttle. Now these are made to run at full throttle and are completely efficient that way and will burn all the carbon off if they're ran at full throttle. But most people, they don't do that. They run it at half throttle. You know, you have to sometimes when you're going around, you know, flower beds or if you're by windows. And so people don't think about it and eventually this happens. Another thing is when you mix your oil too heavy. Now, it's still gonna be great for the piston and cylinder. You're, it's gonna be beautiful, but it will foul out plugs and clog your exhaust up. The thing about it is, it is a simple fix, as long as you know about it. And now you do. Now, why did I go through all those steps before I checked the exhaust when I pretty much knew that it was probably clogged? Well, that's because I didn't. The majority of all units that come into the shop have bad gas or have water in their gas. The second majority of machines that come into the shop are burned up or have a scored piston and cylinder. So I always check those first before I go into the exhaust. But thankfully it was an easy fix. So this guy's getting a new spark plug, a new air filter, a cleaned exhaust. We're gonna throw it back together. I'm gonna put the cover back on, make sure not to pinch your kill wires when you do it. And uh, let's see how she runs. One more thing, a reason I don't do many carburetor adjustment videos is because you need to do all of them steps before you adjust on the carburetor because you can really mess up a machine if you're not sure all of those other issues are taken care of. All right, we've got it turned on. Prime chokes. First ball. Now, after you've done all of those steps and it still doesn't want to throttle up, that is when it warrants for a carburetor adjustment, but it doesn't mean it's a fix. When a carburetor needs to be adjusted, that means something is restricting the gas flow or letting in too much gas. So it, a lot of times could either be something clogged up in the screen. It could be residue left over from water deposits. It could be a lot of things, but it's something wrong with your carburetor. Now, uh, adjustment is a quick fix. It might, you know, restrict or let through some more fuel that it needs. But the fact is, a lot of times you just gotta open up the carburetor. Now, if you would like to go into the carburetor and put a kit in and clean it out, I made a video on a pole saw, an echo pole saw that has the same exact carburetor. I will leave a link right up here and you can see the carburetor kit you need and how to do it all. So. Hopefully that'll save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find us at Chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirt, hoodie, or long sleeve shirt. Thanks and have a great day.